we're going to start off with kind of a general book question. So a, a lot of politicians and public figures, they publish their life story and autobiography, but you've just gone right past the adult nonfiction straight to the children's bookshelves. So why? Why did you pick kids? Why is it important for them to hear your story? Um, yeah, that's a, I, well, I think that's a really good, that's a really good question. And I think that there's probably a, there's probably a few different reasons, but, um, so there's the idea of it, but then there's the why of it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when I think about just kind of like our journey as humans, right? I, I think about how so often, especially, I mean, I know it's true for me, uh, especially when you're a kid, how often we feel like invisible or small or um, not heard or not seen. And I think that, I hope that this book can be um, maybe just a, a little bit uh, or a small piece of a journey that can help, um, you know, somebody see that the, that their, their path is unique. Their journey is, um, is important that it's important that they're seen. It's important that they're heard. And, um, you know, there's, there's definite, there's that, there's that thing that happens, um, that I don't think I recognized until I was an adult where, um, How, like what it feels like to have your experience validated. Wow. And some of that is just, and it, you know, I, I think certainly it, when you think about representation or, or like having uh, kids books that are reflective of kind of our society. Uh, I mean, I was blown away, but then not surprised if that makes sense that, um, you know, there's like, only like 1% of kids book kids books have any kind of native representation in them. And I think that um, when you just, when you imagine this, the small part that like one kids book can play in helping somebody see like, oh yeah, my journey is unique. And like, that's important. Uh, I, I'm just, yeah, I, it, it felt like something that just felt like a really cool thing to be able to, to do. Yeah, that makes sense because when there is less than 1% of children's book have a native representation, then your book suddenly has an outsized impact. And like, and then you stack on top of it that, um, I'm just gonna throw this in here. I think we often, I think, I think kids look at grownups, or at least I did, and think we've got it all figured out. And <laughs> I think we all know that that's not true. Um, <laughs> uh, and or, or that they see, you know, we we look at grownups sometimes and we think like, oh, they had it figured out the whole time. They never made mistakes, you know, and, and especially when like, I never thought I was going to be a member of Congress. Um, and I'm I'm sure there's people who probably think that I was like valedictorian of everything. And um, <laughs> that's that wasn't my experience. You know, I like that's why I share the some of the stories that I share are, you know, I got in trouble a lot when I was in school for talking too much. <laughs> uh, turns okay. out, I mean, I still talk a lot, but it turns out that that's actually like a positive can be a positive skill set, you know, so I think. So I think it's, um, yeah, I think it, I, I think it can, um, hopefully people can connect with it. I think that's the thing that's most compelling. It's not only for me, I'm a mother. And when I look at the book you've, you've written, I don't think of it as just being beneficial to the children that are reading it, but they don't come with, you know, instructions. Right. So, so this book is instructional um, because it's you as an adult telling a story as a child and really telling adults what children need to understand and know and mm -hmm. um, or probably do. Right. Typical children. Um, and I think that's the thing that's so cool about this Sharice's big voice. 
you know, I was saying big mouth, big voice. I mean, you're thinking about, you know, the idea of, of the sense of agency, um, the idea that you're introducing, realizing the power is in your choices. I thought it was a fantastic when you, um, in the author's note, because that's the thing I'm looking at, the why, I'm, like you, I want to understand why did she write this book and who is it for? And then it was the gift of realizing, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff in here. And especially realizing that when you said that a lot of people would say to you, law school changed your life and you correct them and say, no, my life changed when I chose law school. And so the, the reality is that idea, planting that seed for little people that the gift is in the choice, that the, the benefit is in the choice. And I, I just want to understand from you, why did you feel that was important to put into words that children could understand? Um, um, I think, so you know this idea, I, I often talk about the idea of, and I hope that people can, can see it in the book too, that uh, we we get to decide what success means for us, right? And like, I think we spend so much time hearing and, and not, sometimes it's in direct and overt ways. And sometimes it's just kind of the message that we glean from things. And tons of people, um, pro probably not you, because you're around young people a lot, but with being a parent and all, this one, that, but yeah. Just the one. <laughs> that one, yeah. She's about somewhere. 52, right? <laughs> but you know that they they hear and see everything. Yes. And I think that sometimes it can be easy for our society to uh, forget that. And that's part of what I was thinking about was that like, often we don't give young people enough credit for how, for what they're picking up from us. Right. And some of what they pick up from us is, um, if, if you like, you're supposed to want to do X, you're supposed to want to be rich. You're supposed to want to do Y. Um, you know, if you don't get a PhD, you're not a successful person, something like that. Right. Like, like young people get fed that kind of stuff all the time. And it's part of, you know, I often say like, this is, this is not a, this is not a book about how to become a congressperson. <laughs> it's, it's a book about what my experience was seeing that the journey I was on had tons of twists and turns and ups and downs. And, you know, um, I thought it was important to mention the, the, you know, there are people who are going to doubt you. Um, also, sometimes the biggest doubter is ourselves. Like, can I do this? Should I do this? And um, and that's normal. It's totally normal <laughs> for all of that stuff to happen. And, and we get to decide. Like, oh, okay, to me, success means. And it can be, um, you know, Go, being a musician, mm -hmm. uh, being a poet, being an artist, it can be, it can be going and getting a PhD, but one is not more important than the other. It just depends on what's important to you. I think that's, that is so cool. And, and I'm really curious about this concept of, you know, it's the idea of you are changing the world just by being there. Mm. Like that is so loaded. Like that are so much good juice in there. And I just want to understand if, I, if I'm in there by myself or like, what were you thinking when you, when you said that? Because yeah, what does it mean you being there? Cause the whole idea of you being at the white house and noticing that no one looked like you or your family or didn't really seem to connect with the ideas and the things that were important to you and, and the sense of agency to say, I got a big idea. Right. You know, what does that really mean? How do we tell parents what to tell their children what that means? Um, so your question made me think of, I, I think in stories and I often like make, I do a lot of analogies um, and share stories to, to illustrate a point. Your question made me think of um, what it was like when I, 
and multiple different times in my life when I got to law school, uh, when I got to the White House fellowship um, experience, I often felt like, oh, I'm like, I'm so lucky that I get to have this experience. Like, I'm lucky they picked me for, you know, to get into this law school or to get into this um, fellowship program. And and then each time I, I learn over and over again that um, it's true. I have been very fortunate. Um, I have like, I, I, I get to have these experiences, whether it's serving in Congress, being a White House fellow, getting into law school. Um, I'm very fortunate, but also it's really important that people with the kind of experiences that we're talking about, uh, whether it's being raised by a single parent, um, you know, it took me eight years to get a bachelor's degree. It took me four years to get my associates and then four years to get my bachelor's degree. And uh, the really interesting thing about that and that I'm in Congress now is that that's actually not an uncommon experience. It's not uncommon for people to take longer than four years mm -hmm. to get a degree. Um, and but but the thing is, people don't get to see that as often. That's right. Because those aren't always the stories that are getting shared widely. Um, and so when I so when I was doing the White House Fellows program, I was like, man, I'm so lucky to be here. But also, it's really important that voices not not always exactly like mine, but that voices that are different than the other ones in the room are included. Um, so I think that's like that's that's kind of the probably the crux of. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering yeah, then. That that answered your question. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's it. And, and I think just to push at it a little bit more that I so I think of it this way. I think like when I was thinking about even my daughter and, and kids in schools and especially in private schools, when they get a scholarship, oh, I'm so lucky to get it. Right. But what they're not seeing is the value that you're bringing to that conversation. I mean, there's studies. I was just reading the some of us, the Heather McGee book, and she was talking a great deal about this idea that having a difference in the room, a different perspective and thought makes everybody think a bit harder. Like we all have to work harder then. And so yeah. that that difference there is huge. Like you more than paid for yourself being there because you showed up and the conversation got started, right? Like that concept. And I think that's one of the burdens sometimes people who are introduced into majority communities sort of miss out. The gift is you showing up because it's making it broader for everybody. So, I mean, that's that's sort of what I was reading into that. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching what you do and you do that, you know, in your day to day when we see you on TV, that's what's happening. So I, I thought that was just an amazing and a, and a beautiful thing. You know, what do you think the significance is of your book being available and who you are at all the intersections and all the really normal things you're doing that most people don't get to see? Uh, um, you know, what impact would that have on the queer and trans community and on the people that love them, their, their parents or mm. friends or teachers? That's a really, um, I like the framing around n not just the, the folks who read it, who might connect in one way or another with, um, with the story or journey that I'm sharing, um, but also the people who might get a chance to see what it was, what it, what it, at least from my experience, what it might be like. You know, I was just thinking actually of the. Um, I, I really wanted to make sure that the that the story about uh, people asking me when I was a kid, "What are you?" Mm. Um, that question. <laughs> I want, I wanted to make sure to include that because, um, and also to, to include that that's, that's not really a nice question to ask nice. somebody <laughs> right. and, um, not, a, a, and to do it in a way that helps people see why that's not a nice question. Like it doesn't feel good for, it doesn't feel good for the other person. Like you might be curious about somebody 
And that's okay. But you can ask in a curious way that is also like more careful. And it's not, it was interesting you used the word, I think I'm about to use the word instructions because you just said that earlier, but it's not like an instruction manual, like don't say this thing or don't do that thing or do it this way. It's more like, like when I was a kid and people asked me, what are you? Like that was, you know, it, it impacted me. And um, so I, I, I think of, I think of the impact that it could have on someone who reads it. And that's probably the thing that I was thinking about the most, actually. The, the person who reads it and says, oh, someone has asked me before, what are you? And, and like, that's, it isn't a very nice question. It didn't feel very good. But to also think about the other people who read it and see that they can see that it's, it, it, well, it has an impact on people, um, the way that you approach that, like, you're that giving us, you're giving us tools, you're giving tools. And it's something that I've experienced with the African American daughter who has green eyes and light skin and curly, you know, light brown hair. And there's always, what are you? And I'm, of course, defensive. She's human. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, where did you come? Well, it's crazy. And I love that you've given that a voice. I think your story is resonates with all kinds of people, just like you said, and the pictures are beautiful and it's significant and it's just a great departure from the stuff you have to do with every day to really see this why and to understand that it came from a person just like you and props to your mom. I mean, that's like, I, I understand that experience and my, my mother is also single and mm. head of household. And I think that that's also a very valuable story to normalize for people. Speaking of representation, I just wanted to ask you about the process of finding your illustrator and then choosing someone who is also uh, First Nations. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? It was, so it was really important to me that we, um, and everyone on the team, uh, I felt, I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I was on a, um, I, that like the team who was helping with everything was, um, you know, I think, I actually think they pro- they might have come into the whole situation with the assumption that I was going to want to um, find somebody um, who uh, who could tell the story from um, with that a lens like uh, indigenous. Um, I I often say indigenous ways of being. Mm-hmm. And, and that is like a very broad term. It means a lot of different things, but um, but just recognizing that uh, like there's a bunch of stuff in it. First of all, these illustrations are beautiful. They are. They I mean, are. I think he he did such a great job. Um, and I kind of one of the things that I loved about this about the the characters in the book is. Um, there's not a, um, I don't know how to describe the characters other than, um, like I love that in some of these pictures, y- y- you would have no way of knowing, you know, the, what the, uh, 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 gender or, whether someone is uh, non-binary, gender non-conforming, like you, like if you, when you look at these pictures, there are plenty of characters in the book where right. you would have no way of, of um, making those assumptions. Mm-hmm. And I think even that just like, and we didn't, we didn't necessarily talk specifically about that point, but it's something that I loved about just the approach that he took. Um, and then uh, the vibrancy of the colors, mm-hmm. like, uh, which was something that, you know, his artwork is, um, you know, of course I got to see um, other, other, uh, others of his work and that sort of thing, so. But one thing that stuck out to me, and I gotta ask this question is like, what's up with the macaroni and cheese meal? 
after the election on the watch night. What was, what, is there, is there more to the story or is it just mac and cheese a Ho-Chunk thing? Or is it like mac oh, and no. cheese, like everybody eats mac and cheese? <laughs> it just has to do with, um, so there's a couple of references to food in there. Mm-hmm. Um, no onions. No onions. And that, it says pizza. Pizza is my favorite food. Um, <laughs> no onions is true for pizza and everything else. And um, and then mac and cheese is, uh, that was the thing on the menu that I would eat. So I have, this book is about um, kid Charisse growing into an adult. The only thing that didn't progress throughout my life was uh, my tastes in food. So I eat like a five-year-old. <laughs> I'm just really picky. I don't like onions. I'm not a condiments person. Wow. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there's so much here. Yeah, I, yeah. It was, if, if I didn't like it, if, I, if nothing looked familiar on the menu, it was grilled cheese all day. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've eaten with Melissa and it is grilled cheese sometimes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a Midwest thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're just really so thankful for this opportunity. Thank if you. I've been in for you, I'll look you up. Please do. <laughs> yes. Get in touch. Awesome. Thank you so much. You. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.